special good morning to you, our viewers watching from home in St. Lucia, our residents in St. Lucia, as well as St. Lucians living in the diaspora, watching on air and online. We do hope that you have had a restful weekend, a festive weekend in celebration of our mothers uh, from the comfort and safety, COVID-19 wise, of your own home. Uh, my name is Jesse Leonce and I'm joined in studio by my colleague Carlton Cyril as usual for the morning update to the St. Lucia COVID-19 response report for today. Uh, we are live from the Information Command Center at the GIS studios live on NTN and we do hope you continue to stay tuned for the latest updates this morning. Uh, we did uh, have quite a packed week in the last week or so. Um, not We haven't had any development over the weekend from the Ministry of Health and Wellness in terms of cases and whatnot, but we do hope as this week progresses, we will get uh, some word, some developments uh, on the state of COVID-19 management on Ireland. To date, we continue to have only 18 uh, COVID-19 cases, 17 so far having been recovered and our fingers are crossed that we can once again boast of a 100 percent recovery rate in due time uh, we've also uh, have word and that there is testing testing is ongoing if anything it has become it has increased so far the uh, ezra long laboratory here on island has become well equipped better equipped uh, to uh, roll out testing as uh, quickly as possible as we continue to respond to the effects and to of, of COVID-19 and the suspected cases of COVID-19 being reported uh, to uh, the respiratory clinics uh, throughout the island. Carlton? Uh, merci tellement, uh, Jesse. Et bonjour pour vous. Uh, Jodia, c'est le 11 mai, lundi. Et nous savons, Chahide, où uh, tu es un bon fait, maman. Uh, Chahide, nous avons amusé Koyo encore à uh, ce uh, développement dat qui le uh, gouvernement uh, permet aux hommes, les licences aux hommes, d'un côté, quand les hommes, moi, si vous êtes un bon temps. Nous avons dit bonjour ici à ces headquarters uh, Vemin uh, COVID-19. Nous avons mené tout développement. Toute information nous ni elle l'aide ni pour faire plus Covid, euh, ben pour à présent l'aide ni pour faire plus eh, Covid de manière bagarre laie eh, nous déjà ni à peu près eh, 18 18 moun a trouvé qu'on y a testé pour eh, Covid 19 positif ça y est eh, vers Covid là 17 j'ai recouvert et eh, Kayo nous était yon en isolation quoi ça c'est si bonne nouvelle les eh, groupes qui ont été nouvelles l'autre pays ou qui savent eh, l'aide vient ni pour ça ou qu'attend nous en dans bon position mais nous attendons tout le monde qui a eu des informations pour faire du Covid, le département de santé, si un mois, nous attendons un avertissement du ministre du gouvernement, tout le monde qui a dit que nous ne pouvons pas vivre le business comme normal. Nous avons combattu le Covid, c'est pour ça que nous toujours ici à Cadeau, changer le protocole, changer le niveau de la ville, changer encore, mais c'est là qu'il vient pour masse en public, ou ni pour faire ça, distance sociale. Messieurs, dames, nous avons combattu le Covid, toujours, nous ni pour changer, ça qui est bien important. Mais à part de ça, quand le développement qu'a fait, nous avons mené, et nous avons dit merci tellement pour ces gens de l'autre pays qui euh, ont suivi nous, pour ces gens qui ont sur Internet, là, ou qui ont nous à sur radio, nous toujours avons après ce temps qu'on a fait pour être et nous, mais qu'on nous toujours dit ici, on a une information des pays ni un lien pour faire puis Covid et puis ça qui a passé et puis nous caïba ou ici. Non, moi c'est Carlton Cyril, puis mais qu'on est qu'on Cox avec moi ici et puis Jesse Léon, c'est qu'on joue et qu'on continue au cas une information sort ici. Thank you very much for that. Uh, this morning, we have a uh, chief economist, Mr. Tommy Descartes from the Economic Development uh, Department. He will be coming in to sit with us, to speak to us. Among other matters, uh, we have the medium term development strategy of the government of St. Lucia that was launched uh, way before the, the, the full blow of COVID-19 globally. And um, we are going to be speaking to him on how the government is going to be uh, implementing, rolling out to this medium-term development strategy in the face of COVID-19. So we do hope that you can stay tuned for that. Uh, Mr. Descartes was also uh, a 
fe feature presenter uh, on the panel discussion that was held uh, last night. And uh, just to give you some information on that panel discussion, if you uh, did not have a chance to watch live on NTN last night, uh, COVID-19 roadmap to recovery, the role of investment. And uh, this the COVID-19 pandemic is expected to have a lasting impact on investment and the economy. We continue to review the economic impact of the pandemic on St. Lucia whilst also charting the road to recovery. And uh, the panel of experts weigh, weighed in on a subject matter including the state of the economy, building financial resilience, investment prospects, initiatives and support for local investment, uh, capital expenditure and development projects, St. Lucia's uh, medium-term development strategy, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, new opportunities for uh, the various sectors in St. Lucia. Uh, the usual uh, moderator, Titus Preville, uh, we had uh, Mr. Frank Myers, a chartered accountant and deputy chairman of the National Insurance Corporation. Uh, we also had Ms. Karen uh, Fontenelle-Peter. Uh, she's the president of the Chamber of Commerce as well as uh, the general manager of Caribbean uh, Metals. And we had Mr. Tommy Descartes, as mentioned, and Alana Lansico Bryce. She is the investment services manager at Investor St. Lucia. And she gave a, a sort of an insight as to where things are headed. Well, more I should say, accelerated for Invest St. Lucia uh, post COVID or as we recover from COVID. Let's take a look at her first clip. In terms of promotion and attraction, mm. it's going to be ferocious. Um, That's what highly, you intend to do. Highly competitive in terms okay. of what it's going to look at post-COVID. So when I say post-COVID, I say maybe six months, six months from now. Um, first of all, companies have to deal with their cash flow needs. So that's the immediate, the immediate issue right now. And then Invest in Lucia, like other investment promotion agencies around the world, will be trying to secure the pipeline project that have already committed yeah. to St. Lucia and to your respective country because you need to get them implemented quickly because finance can move very quickly. Finance that was once committed to a project today may not be there six months from now. And uh, she also mentioned some of the critical areas uh, that uh, St. Lucia will need to look at, looking at ICT and so on, right. in terms of strengthening those areas to be able to facilitate uh, investment in the country. It's going to be facilitation to make sure those projects come through the pipeline quickly, they can start construction, and then it's also going to be a focus, like every other country in the world, on ICT and the digital economy, because this pandemic has brought things to light that we probably knew already, but weren't actioning um, quite as ferociously as we should, but now there is a need to accelerate that even further. So ICT investment, um, and working on investments or partnerships that will enhance the skills of our workforce. That's something we hear a lot about lo locally and internationally because businesses want a location that can provide a solution to, to their needs. Um, so skills training, that is going to be um, important. And then we're going to have to look at how we can transform St. Lucia, not just as a tourism service economy, but a gen generally as a business services economy, non-tourism. We already have that kind of business happening here. So the business outsourcing um, sector is here. Um, the largest companies employed pre-COVID approximately 1,500 people. And for the most part, they were able to retain most of their employees because they were able to deploy their staff to work from home um, because their homes had the IC infrastructure, they had the, the, mm -hmm. the, the Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. they were able to provide persons with computers, and they actually saw more work coming in because these are companies that assist with healthcare providers in the US, fine banks and other financial institutions in the US. So that is what it's going to be like. It's going to be ferocious. It's going to be very competitive. Um, so so you have to be in a, pl a place to move quickly. Uh, that was uh, Miss Alana Lansico Bryce, uh, one of the panelists at last night's uh, panel discussion live on NTN, uh, speaking on the role of investment. And if we uh, take a look at things, uh, Carlton, mm -hmm. we will be seeing increased competition globally, you know, mm -hmm. for uh, investment into the various economies. So hopefully St. Lucia can um, secure and maintain its, its, its um, investment prospects right now right. Uh, going into our recoveries to Ogawell for us overall. 
Definitely, um, I'll just say another um, part of this, um, when it relates to her comments, one of the things she said, which I think is very important, is not only identifying the investment, but when it comes through, or how fast we get it out, you know, into the public, how fast it is materialized, you know, is very important. And of course, we have to remember when we brought in Mr. Nassis, he was saying, you know, with DigiGov, and we hear mm -hmm. those investments. It's one thing to say the investments, but it's one thing of um, putting it in place. Absolutely. Um, you know, because definitely another um, aspect of what she just said in last night's discussion, when it comes to we are not the only ones mm -hmm. in, 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 in the global um, community, added to that, remember, tourism being our backbone, now we have to see, okay, what do we do and how do we go ahead, you mm -hmm. know, coming back or putting our foot, as we say, it, uh, back on the ground. Absolutely. Oui, et que quand nous avons discuté, nous avons eu un temps à Alan Alantico Bryce. Nous souhaitons tenir une discussion ici, et parmi les gens qui étaient sur le panel qui a discuté, de manière pour vivre mes investissements, c'est de manière pour que les choses changent, les gens viennent pour nous, et qui ça nous a fait dans le temps économique. Quand parmi les gens, Frank Myers était en l'air, et nous tenions Bryce. Um, qui était là, monsieur, et Tommy Descartes. Et c'est mon ça, attention, c'est pour uh, directer nous, et bien, ouvrir ces vers nous, en situation nous y a présent. Expressement, là, il pour investissement économique. Et puis, eh, là où tu es en parole, qui a sorti Hodman Zebrais, et qui a ces bagailles là, il a identifié, et qui a dit, eh, ou quand ils savent, nous, ce n'est pas uh, simplement un pays qui a espéré eh, pandémique, corona, quoi, à présent, Uh, nous savons, en chaque département et en chaque activité, tout ce qui est affecté à ce résultat du corona. En parmi, vous uh, savez, les affaires touristes, c'est ça nous a dépendé à ce Mais à présent, vous avez parlé à ce ITC, qui est les affaires Internet, les affaires computer. À présent, chaque business qui a été pour faire ce qu'on a. Et il n'y a pas de longtemps, nous avons dit, M. Descartes, le gouvernement ici a parlé uh, concernant uh, DigiGov, qui voulait monter le gouvernement après ça, qui a fait tout le monde, en chaque ces services-là on paye licence ou Henri Baptiste ou ces bagages ça y est fait avec tout ça ni vous faites puis computer mais et puis à sur internet là quoi là présent là il vient pour payer qui caille bon nous assistance l'argent qui caille en tout business qui caille vient en ligne ça là il qu'a dit c'est pas ni mener l'argent mais mettez ces projets ça pour mon ça Henri a dans temps les nous pas qu'à dépendre des belles affaires touristes par Jeffo. Quand on voit un chai en tension, à mettre à sous, qui manière nous gravir à sous pied, qui manière économie nous, qu'il vient à masser quoi. Encore une raison pour ça, c'est un chai ça nous dégage dépendre à sous ces affaires touristes, hôtels, travailleurs, toutes ces bases ça, c'est ça qui dégage euh, stimuler économie. Mais au cas où un client laisse appeler ça, qu'on dit j'ai cité des plus bons nerfs, nous caïni Monsieur Tommy Descartes ici, il c'est un économiste, il a un plus petit détail, là il vient pour ça nous parler à celui-là. Mais où était en écoute, nous allons continuer ici à son lundi bon matin. Absolutely, and just to go back to yesterday's uh, uh, last night's panel mm -hmm. discussion, I mean, it was established that you know the cash flow crisis. Uh, we have. Um the cash bond salary proposal being made mm -hmm. by government uh, you know how how do we now go about um you know taking advantage of investment in saint lucia how how does uh, the government you know begin to attract you know foreign investors to, to saint lucia to ensure that we can continue to uh, you know stay buoyant uh, economy wise uh, mm -hmm. so uh these topics and more we, we will go into a detail with them with mr tommy descartes this morning um discussing all of the facets, uh, socioeconomic, all of mm -hmm. the facets uh, that um, will impact the way we do business. It will certainly Definitely. not be business as usual, you know, coming out of COVID-19. If you look at all of the forecasts, um, uh, some of which are, mm -hmm. I dare say, very optimistic when you look at the very grim situation that we're facing in terms of the revival of sectors, the revival of economies. I mean, the most uh, concerning one, the, the one that we're looking at most is the revival of tourism. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what, 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 what level of consumer confidence uh, will, um, uh, 
will there be in, in, in terms of persons coming back to the islands and taking advantage of our sun, sea, and sand, you know? So there are, there are several factors that need to be taken into consideration. And as we heard from Mr. Descartes, uh, we, the, the medium-term development strategy of uh, the government of St. Lucia is uh, uh, flexible in that way, that it is, it is, uh, it is agile uh, in that it can, uh, it is uh, possible for it to uh, adjust to the the varying effects of COVID-19. So uh, we will be speaking uh, to Mr. Descartes this morning. We do hope you can stay tuned for that, uh, delving into the medium-term uh, development strategy of St. Lucia as we begin to recover from COVID-19. Uh, we are due for our first break. When we come back, we go over some uh, updates for this morning, and uh, we will be going into the interview with Mr. Descartes. So do stay tuned. Because of how quickly the coronavirus spreads, each new case calls for increased public vigilance. Know what is happening, understand why, and comply. Think of the protocols as war tactics. Personal protection tactics. Keep six feet away from others. Avoid riding the bus, gathering on beaches, in bars, and shops. Public protection tactics. Quarantine yourself if you feel fluish in case you have been exposed. Call 311 or a respiratory clinic for advice. Country tactics, partial lockdown. Supermarkets, small grocers, pharmacies, and ATMs are accessible before curfew. Total lockdown, everywhere stays closed 24 seven for a stipulated period. Team tactics, don't only follow the protocols, be a protocols police. Let's win this. Together, let us win this war. Set to shall be a soldier. Together, we can beat this corona. Better yet use soap and water We must protect each other If we are to beat this corona Together let us win this war Be a soldier for solution Together let us win this war Be a soldier together we can beat this corona So you don't become the next case Avoid touching your face I'm sure you've been told so Handshakes and hugging are rock no, no. Advice each other, please. Cover your mouth and your nose if you cough or sneeze. Practice social distancing and avoid large social gatherings. Together, let us win this war. Be a soldier for seclusion. Together, let us win this war. Seclusion, be a soldier. Together, we can beat this corona. For further information, please contact the hotline at 311 or the Bureau of Health Education at 468-5349. Set le si ka registre ve min corona ek i ka fe mouvement ek an chai vitès tan chak ka nef ka kouye pou vilijans publik la fe wolo pale an plas publik Kombol an me, baz, ti boutik, chanje, distan sosyal, sis pie, hod yon alot. I ka twa vaitan, si ou santi kou pa kodyal, kwarantin kou, pa twe a kontak epi lot, an ka ou te twa pe espoze. Se an ekwye, fri wan wan ou be ne pot klinik yo pwe ou. Le, Pays à Dimia Clé, ça veut dire les supermarchés, pharmacies et puis ATM, yo accessible avant cette soirée. Pays à Clé en plein, ça veut dire tout bagay fermé à 24 heures. C'est vi protocole comme sorti par bio indication santé. Nous tout ensemble, ça sauve vers min corona. Si nous tout Sevi Jidla a tutle. Together let us win this war. Se tu shall be a soldier. Together we can beat this corona.
are my new superheroes. That's why they're all wearing masks. Doing everything they can to keep everyone in St. Lucia safe. You don't think we know who you are, but we see you every single day. You are my friend's dad, my uncle, my father, my best friend's mom, my aunt, and the guy next door. You are the best of all of us, working together to save the world. Not all superheroes get to wear capes, but you might have noticed they're all wearing masks. So, be a hero and wear one too. Stay safe, your Digicel family. Uh, thank you so very much for staying tuned. Uh, this is uh, the uh, COVID-19 response report uh, for St. Lucia this uh, morning. Uh, we are live uh, from the Information Command Center at the Government Information uh, Studios. Uh, thank you so much for uh, staying tuned. Uh, we uh, now continue our programming this morning uh, with uh, the an interview, as promised, uh, with uh, the Chief Economist, uh, Mr. Uh, Tommy Descartes. A pleasant good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to start with, uh, for all our viewers, and to ensure that we have a, a comprehensive understanding from beginning to finish, uh, can you give us a state of the economy as at COVID-19? What are we facing right now? All right, um, so Jesse, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the COVID pandemic is uh, unprecedented in, 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 in many ways. Firstly, it's a global, so everybody, is, is impacted, mm -hmm. and obviously St. Lucia, so that's a local. It is a public health uh, crisis as well as an economic crisis. And so what we've seen is uh, our main economic driver, tourism sector, um, has taken a nose, a nose dive in a sense, a sort of mm -hmm. a flat line in, um, with, with no tourist arrivals, almost zero tourist arrivals. And that has resulted in uh, tourism, uh, the hotels um, the lane of almost 13,000 13, individuals within mm -hmm. a couple of weeks. That clearly has implications for, for unemployment. Um, and so the government now, um, and, and also the, the issue around tax revenues, mm -hmm. because that is a, a critical issue um, for, for the government. And so the overall, um, and, and in the context of COVID, one of the ways to, to mitigate or the impact uh, is to have the social distancing uh, protocols in place, which, which um, seriously mitigates um, um, activity, economic activity. And so you see that, that a lot of firms have, have shut down their doors. And so the ripple effect is, is dire. I mean, we, we are trying to sort of understand the magnitude, but it's really, we don't even fully understand because of the lot of uncertainty around COVID, because you may wake up tomorrow morning and then there's a vaccine, you know, and, you, and, and so there's a lot of uncertainty. And so we know um, initially pre-COVID, St. Lucia was expected to grow by 3.5%. Right. Uh, and that was, mm -hmm. you know, that, that was very good. Post-COVID, the figures are now close to a contraction of 8.5%, and, and, and other persons are saying it may be closer to 18%. I mean, can you imagine what an 18% contraction in your economy is going to look like? So, so that has implications for jobs, that has implications for tax revenues, and, and so it's a very difficult time. And, and also, um, and given that everybody's facing it at the same time, there's somewhat everybody's trying on their own. So you look at the mm -hmm. U.S. The U.S. is clearly um, having, uh, you know, um, issues. And uh, again, I think the government also in this context have constrained fiscal space. We know that. I mm -hmm. mean, the government don't have the kind of monies to pump in. Um, granted, the government is, is, is trying in terms of giving income support and so on. But that is something that is clearly not sustainable. And, and so we really, we really have to manage um, and, and given the uncertainty around COVID, the question is we will have to learn to live with COVID for some period of time. So Jesse, I, I would say that, that the situation currently is dire. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, and as we try to uh, understand the impact of COVID and monitor the economy, it is certainly a very dire situation for us. Um, um, in, in this country at this point. Okay, uh, we're still trying to figure out our way going through COVID, yeah. uh, but uh, thousands forced on the breadline, um, businesses on the brink of, of collapse mm. within just weeks of the Prime Minister indicating that the country would be closed, state of emergency and mm. so on. What indications uh, does that provide on, our st on our, what our state of economy was all this time? 
Well, certainly what COVID has done is that COVID has exposed um, and brought, uh, brought to light some of the inherent structural vulnerabilities in our economy. Um, and so it really uh, has shown us that, you know, um, uh, some of the key issues in our, um, the ability of our, our, of our, our, our private sector, how, how, how robust and strong our private sector is. But granted, I mean, the biggest companies in the world are facing, facing this, you know, um, um, the challenges. So it really shows that, that there are a lot of structural vulnerabilities um, that, 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 that we were living with all along. But COVID is, is, all, is almost as a case, someone who had pre-existing pre conditions of diabetes and so on. Ex being exposed to COVID now, you become particularly at risk and even, even, even you may lose your life. So is, a, is, is something akin to that, that there are a lot of vulnerabilities in the economy and COVID has come in with this shock, both at a global and at a do domestic level. And we see the, the repercussions and the consequences of that now. Okay. And, and going back to being now in COVID-19, I want to talk about the trade-off between uh, the health situation and economic measures. Uh, tell us about that very slippery slope, that balancing act that, you know, uh, the government has to consider. Yeah, and that's a very tough uh, decision and, and a, uh, like you said, a balancing act because on one hand, first and foremost, you need to save lives and, and then you look at livelihoods. So um, the government has had to, to introduce uh, very drastic social distancing measures and that in includes shutting down your, your economy. So you both on the supply side in terms of your firms um, the, the, these close contact, non-essential firms um, and companies cannot operate. Um, and on the demand side, households have limited um, um, a, a ability to go out and, and go to bars and restaurants and so on. So you're contracting the economies significantly. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the, the questions. The question now is how long mm -hmm. will, that, will we continue to, to uh, have this policy stance? And what is this sort of so? What are the sort of implications? I mean, at this point, your economy is, is seriously hemorrhaging, and this is not just an internal thing. Uh, you have now your the external factor of the tourism sector. You don't have tourism at at, at, at the same time, but the government now has some constants. It has mm -hmm. to pay its salaries. It has to service its debt. So there are a lot of issues, and now with the significant amount of persons being being laid off. The government now has to come as a last resort and give some sort of income support to at least guarantee a minimum uh, um, um, expenditure of these persons during this period of COVID um, in, in the immediate in the immediate um, in the immediate t time as as we see. Okay, and some of, we've seen some of the measures that uh, the government of Saint Lucia has taken in terms of business continuity. Yeah. We've seen um, the public service moving yeah. many persons staying yes. at home yes. to work, yes. and even getting reports uh, from uh, Miss uh, Peggy uh, Peggy Ann Sudat that yes. there has been increased productivity yeah. uh, due to that. Uh, certainly, a look uh, a look again at how we do business in Saint Lucia going forward. Yeah. Um, also, uh, we're seeing the government. Uh, uh, propositioning the uh, unions on this situation with the cash and bond mm -hmm. salaries. Uh, can you speak to some of the um, measures that the, the government is now putting forward uh, to try to uh, stay afloat in this COVID-19 situation and what, it, what, it, what is it doing for the government in terms of s staving off um, uh, cash flow issues and so on? Yes, yeah, so uh, the government, you would notice, has a treated this in terms of a triage approach in mm -hmm. a sense that first, the first phase you deal with the public health and social distancing. And as a result of that, we saw the, the layoffs and other things that's actually happening. The government now brought in the social um, stabilization packages in terms of the income mm -hmm. support and NIC coming in um, and helping uh, persons who are contributors by, and, and giving that, that sort of support. And the government is, is seriously thinking at also assisting uh, non-NIC contributors, persons in the of informal sector. So St. Lucia has uh, a lot of persons who don't work in a formal type of economy, mm -hmm. but they work as small, um, perhaps um, small bars you know, and so on. So the government is also looking at that. And there's the, the issue around giving support to, the, to these in terms of liquidity. You know, you really don't want, um, you know, firms going under in a sense, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and with the, the intention that they will be able to retain some of their stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, the, the policies that you implement now will, 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 is critical in that it will help um, and determine to what extent how quickly you will recover as an economy. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you get, if your private sector gets seriously damaged from this, um, when the time comes that, you know, the, there's an all clear with the whole situation of COVID has subsided, um, 
you still want to have a private sector intact that mm -hmm. can now continue and, and absorb that excess supply of labor that you have in the economy. So, um, so some of the policies are, are, are currently being under, uh, currently under construction, Jesse. Mm -hmm. The government has put together an economic recovery and resilience strategy. Um, and there's a, that's a multi-stakeholder team of both private sector and public sector individuals who are now seriously looking at what are the options um, that is available to the government and within the, within the, the constraints um, that it faces um, and as best as possible how to minimize the impact of COVID and the hemorrhaging that we see is actually happening now as a result of COVID. Uh, at the two panel discussions that have been uh, uh, held so far, uh, manufacturing and even agriculture, they've been identified as uh, two of the major sectors and the services sector yeah. to really bring St. Lucia out of this, uh, to revive St. Lucia, yeah, sort of resuscitate yeah, the economy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you speak to the role that manufacturing, I think uh, we could start with manufacturing, it plays in terms of uh, the, the, its role in the economy and how it can uh, revive, uh, help revive our, our economy post-COVID? So certainly the, the manufacturing sector is critical to, to this recovery strategy in St. Lucia. And I think um, on the issue of, of food security and the role that it plays in, in ensuring we have food security um, in, in, uh, in St. Lucia, the manufacturing sector has tremendous potential um, because it, it has a sort of a labor intensive. It can absorb a lot of, um, of, 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 of labor. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but however, the, the manufacturing sector has struggled from for a number of challenges, and, and a lot of it is around business, bus ease of bus doing business. business mm -hmm. I, I mean, for instance, we know there is the perennial issue of, of energy, the cost of energy, which is one of the things that the manufacturing sector has, has, has clamored to a large extent, is, is impacting on their productivity. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there, there are other cases where uh, we see thriving manufacturing sectors globally. Um, and if you realize, um, a lot of them have access to liquidity, so they are export-import banks that the China, um, Taiwan, Australia, even the US, that provides that sort of liquidity to the, to the manufacturing sector mm -hmm. to help them um, export their, um, their, their products into the export market. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's a lot of issues around uh, competitiveness, how competitive the, the, the price and the quality of the, manufacture, the manufactured goods here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's an ongoing discussion. Mm -hmm. But I, I certainly think that COVID has sort of, you know, given uh, both the government and the, the, the private sector a sort of um, a nudge that we need to act. And these sectors, that agriculture and, and, and the manufacturing sector, we need to sort of try to strengthen the linkages between the agriculture sector and the manufacturing mm -hmm. sector to have that kind of, um, that strong linkage between them. Mm -hmm. And so COVID is now still and say, we've been talking about this thing for a long time. Let's put action and see how we could transform and like you indicated, that sort of uh, we have a, a sort of a concentration risk on tourism. Mm -hmm. A lot of our of our uh, 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 the tourism sector contributes the, the largest to our economy, mm -hmm. and so now, um, if we can now diversify our economy and, and put a stronger focus on agriculture and, and manufacturing, which is kind of limit the risk that we see in, as a result of uh, from emanating from a tourism um, um, dependent type of economy that we have in St. Lucia now. Okay. And we have seen so far uh, government <coughs> using it, it's uh, trying to stimulate the agriculture sector. We've seen the National Meals Program. Yes. In terms of agri uh, manufacturing, can you speak uh, to, I know you did yeah. a, a bit last yeah. night, yeah. can you speak to how government can use its expenditure uh, to boost manu the manufacturing yeah. sector? Yeah. That's something that I, I, I totally uh, agree to. I think that government can leverage um, its expenditure and procurement uh, policies as a, a lever to, to, to strengthen the manufacturing sector, for instance. We have um, case in points, they say maybe beds, medical beds. Mm -hmm. um, you would need mattresses and so on. So per perhaps you would want to buy that from Lubeco, which, which is a, a local, a local um, producer of this, this kind. Mm -hmm. uh, the government produce, um, purchases um, furniture, uh, uh, office equipment and so on. Uh, if you have a manufacturing sector that, that, that produces this, the government could leverage some of these, um, its expenditure to somehow to help uh, the, 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 the manufacturing sector. And there are a number of other ways that, that, that could happen, but, but having a dedicated policy. And, and I was told that uh, on one of the panelists mm -hmm. uh, last night that there is a cabinet conclusion that states, that mandates that before we procure anything outside of the country, that we ought to see whether it, it, it's, it's, provide, it's available mm -hmm. um, internally within the economy 
okay. and pro uh, procure that. So, so perhaps it's a, a time when we need to re, re, um, re look that, 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 that policy and uh, place greater emphasis on how do we stimulate, because that's what you really want. One of the issues we've had is that our economy is very open. And so a lot of, because we import so much, monies are, there's a lot of leakage out of the economy. Mm -hmm. And if we can now uh, purchase more, and the government can act as, a, as a one that procures more from the private sector, for the manufacturing sector, that would certainly stimulate uh, um, um, the economy, uh, especially now, uh, Jesse. Okay. Effect on the demographics. Um, I think the most relevant that I can apply to St. Lucia based on the conversations that we've been having from here is my um, persons returning home. Mm -hmm. uh, can you speak to some of the effects that this can have on our economy? Persons yeah. returning home, a lot of persons repatriated, a lot of persons who were abroad being sustained uh, uh, yeah. employment on the cruise ships yeah. now have to come home unemployed. Speak to that dynamic. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is another uh, very um, interesting dynamic, Jesse, because uh, one of the things that Saint Lucia, one of the policy that Saint Lucia was um, pushing was to export its 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 people in a sense. So you mm -hmm. export them onto the cruise ship, you export um, your human capital and so on. And now, given that this is a global pandemic and, and the cruise the cruise sector is particularly hit, um, and now you now have to repatriate these people back into your into your into your into your economy, the the hope is that 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 we will see the cruise sector. Uh, mm -hmm. bouncing back rather quickly and, and and so these persons can now um, go back I have a sister who's actually working who's who's working on the cruise 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 um, in the cruise on a cruise ship mm -hmm. uh, fortunately she came in a week before wow. we closed down um, the, our borders <laughs> and so on and so um, she's been keeping me updated as to what the the cruise her particular cruise ship is, has been communicated to her and then mm -hmm. so there's a sort of a understanding that maybe by August mm -hmm. um, hopefully I, I think that um, that it will reemploy you know hopefully re start that, that process and reemploying persons and so on um, but I think on the unemployment on 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 side one of my concerns is um, I, I that perhaps the number of persons that are unemployed now and the layoffs when the, the economy recovers you will not see um, the same number of persons being reemployed, mm -hmm. and it could mean a case where, so let's assume in the, in the, the, the tourism sector you had thirteen thousand persons. Um, mm -hmm. It may be a case that the, the, the tourism sector will say, so you know, maybe I, I, I be cautious. I'll be cautious and not employ the full thirteen thousand, reemploy the full. So that would mean a case where persons are becoming structurally unemployed as a result mm -hmm. of, of of COVID, for mm -hmm. instance, and that was similar. To what happened in the, in, the, in the banana the banana industry when we the whole preferential trade uh, um, we lost that preferential access and we were moving to the services sector in terms of tourism there are persons who just did not have the skill sets to move transition into into the services sector and so it's critical now that uh, we focus on on retooling and reskilling a, a, a large subset of our sector in order because face it work as we know it will change drastically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. once possible. There are companies now who have gone on online and doing remote working, and they're saying they, they've seen increase in productivity, mm -hmm. and they're saying me perhaps I don't need to invest significantly in, in, in a plant or, or Br office and space, mortar. brick mm -hmm. and mortar, and so a lot of emphasis now being placed on the digital economy and so on. And I do know that f from San Lucia's perspective, uh, we've started a lot of these. So we had the DGGov initiative, which mm -hmm. looks at um, automating a lot of the services that's in, and and and. At the time, we did not have the COVID scenario in place, Jesse. Mm -hmm. So it, it shows now we were looking at purely from a productivity standpoint. How can we use I ITC to become more productive as a country? But we see now the issue of COVID, it helps significantly, and you need to fast track that. Um, uh, the upskilling our, our, our private sector. You know, a lot of our private sector don't have some basic um, um, ICT skills and mm -hmm. so on, and that kind of thing. Um, and even an emphasis on financial transactions. You know the banking sector. You know, we, I know the banks have been trying to do this online banking, mm -hmm. with mobile mm -hmm. banking, um, and and there's somewhat you still see a significant amount of persons still going into the banks. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. on long lines. You know, mm -hmm. so, so I think now COVID is going to force a cultural change. Mm -hmm. um, persons who are that sort of technophobe and trying to stay away from from technology will will be forced to to embrace the technology. Yeah. Um, but also the, the 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 private sector now needs to. Um, they, they, they have to survive and if they, if they do not transition using technology, 
you may see a significant amount of our private sector going under. So it's 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 a very dynamic uh, um, a time, Jesse. But mm -hmm. but I think COVID has. Uh, presented a tremendous opportunity for us to do the things that we've been talking about for a long time now. Okay. Uh, also, you, well, we spoke about persons coming back unemployed, uh, having worked abroad, but you have second and third generation St. Lucians, yes. perhaps, who, you know what, this COVID-19 situation, <laughs> let me just come back at my home, and they have um, they have funds, capital, um, yes. they want to make yes. investments into yes. the country. Yes. Can you speak to that as well? Certainly, I think the diaspora, I mean, um, can assist us. You know, I, 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 I do know um, my wife's um, mom, you know, family literally lives in the, the U.S. And, mm -hmm. and, and my wife was telling me that she was saying, well, you know what, I need to come back here, you know, and mm -hmm. so on. And, and people are saying, well, you know, that, kind of, that sort of, um, you know, so, so perhaps it's something that, that we may see actually happen, uh, Jesse, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, a sort of a repatriation of persons who have been in the diaspora for a significant amount of time. And they are coming back with, with, with possibly capital that mm -hmm. they can invest but also ideas. They've they've had they've been exposed to a lot of things, mm, you know. There. So, so that's a possible, um, maybe an un unintended, uh, a positive effect that could emanate out of COVID, and, and that will certainly help because you have these persons who are coming in. Mm -hmm. um, but let's hope um, that that they coming in with the the requisite skill sets mm -hmm. and, and, and and resources that they can help. And not sort of a, be a burden, you know, in mm -hmm. a sense. You know, so that's something that we have to be mindful. Well, of. Uh, speaking of which, you you have in Saint Lucia. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a caller last night. Uh, well, you guys had a caller talking mm -hmm. about the section of the population that is unemployable, mm -hmm. unskilled, yeah. uh, having uh, some persons not having uh, savings to be able to tide yeah. this this situation. Yeah. Yeah. Can you speak to now this this effect on and um, being a burden, sort of, yeah. you know, to to the government? Well, I I think. Uh, I mean, we don't. We, I don't. The government doesn't want to s see that person's being a burden. You mm -hmm. know, um, h how we economic wise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so what we want to do I is that we want your human capital is critical to to any development, and so we want to ensure that persons we we optimize our human capital. So mm -hmm. uh, recognizing that there are certain persons who are unemployable that don't have these necessary skill sets to to be of any value to the labor market. The government has taken a robust uh, policy stance on technical vocational education. Okay. A and in our medium-term development strategy, um, on our under the education pillar, we focus a lot on um, retooling a, a large segment of our population. So one of the clear targets that we have is by the end of the, the medium-term development strategy cycle, which ends in 2023, we want at least 7,500 young persons, well, not, not necessarily young persons, but persons in general, to be trained in TVET in some mm -hmm. sort of a uh, skill, okay, um, uh, and, and that's a critical thing, you know. Uh, but there's al uh, also we get an additional support um, for the EU for for TVET related work. Mm -hmm. um, there's a TVET policy that I, I, I know that has already been uh, 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 um, approved and, uh, and and so on. So there's that sort of while we understand that that there are a lot of persons who who don't have the skill sets, the government is taking a very deliberate and decisive policy action uh, the action where we are going to retool and train. And now, even more so, we see with the COVID scenario mm -hmm. moving not beyond beyond TVET, but the issue of the digital economy, getting persons to become more 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 IT savvy and, and leveraging ICT. Uh, there's the, this whole thrust around um, big data and, and AI, artificial intelligence. And these are these are you 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 can work remotely anywhere in the world if you are an expert in these areas. And these are high paying paying jobs. So it's it's uh, I, I think that we on we are with COVID has presented us opportunity to restructure our economy and look at services, but high value services um, in in TVET and in also in ICT and so on. Okay. Uh, we are speaking to Mr. Tommy Descartes, the uh, Chief Economist at the Economic Development Department. Uh, when we come back, we will be touching on and getting into the meat of things in terms of the medium-term development strategy that uh, was launched here in February, as well as the country financing uh, roadmap, and that will help in terms of uh, funding for the MTDS, right? Yes, okay, yes. do stay tuned for that and more. We're live on NTN from the Information Command Center. We continue conversation on COVID-19 and its effect on St. Lucia going forward. Stay tuned. With all that's happening around us, simple adjustments are necessary to keep us all safe. When calling 911, we may need a little more information to deploy the right personnel and protocols. 
You may be asked about your travel history, signs and symptoms, contact and movement history, and whether others in your household are exhibiting similar symptoms. Please, be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Thank you so very much for staying tuned. Uh, we are... Uh, I say, waist deep into our program this mm -hmm. morning. Uh, mm -hmm. The COVID-19 response report we have in studio, Mr. Tommy Descartes, Chief Economist at the Economic Development Department. And uh, he's been speaking to us on the effects of COVID-19, the state of our economy right now. I think, you know, uh, there may be so, some persons who are now making mm -hmm. adjustments, but some for those who have not yet adjusted or understood the stock reality of mm -hmm. things, you know, uh, it's not looking good. And as he, the, the, wor the word he used to describe it is that our economy, things are looking dire uh, in the face of COVID-19. Uh, of course, the <laughs> government of St. Lucia has put in place measures uh, in, in, in terms of the medium-term development strategy uh, that is coinciding with the onset of COVID-19. And we hope that uh, this, this arsenal can be used uh, to, to help us uh, stay buoyant in this world and uh, keep our economy buoyant uh, as we go through the recovery process. Before we go into the medium-term development strategy and all, uh, all that surrounds it, I uh, just want to hand over to Carlton to give a summary and mm -hmm. engage Mr. Descartes on mm -hmm. what we've been speaking on so far. Um, merci tellement, um, Jesse, et bonjour, M. Descartes. Bonjour. Eh, bonjour, c'est les gens qui ont écouté ce eh, qui a fait ici en studio à présent. Eh, si vous avez écouté à son lundi bon matin, Jesse et puis Cox qui a parlé, et puis M. Zanlaï, ou à tenir des paroles servies, moi-même, je l'ai écouté, et moi presque pède, eh, parce que ça fait Covid l'an a fait un chai bagay, eh, qu'on nous a dit, il a magnifié un chai bagay, fait un chai bagay, nous ne pouvons pas prendre en considération, il a mené clair. Quand uh, ça y est, nous avons parlé de euh, premier pas, un monsieur est des quatre économiste. Eh, ça c'est yon moun le eh, ki ka eh, ve business la han man yon vini man yon ka dépense yek eh, yon ka ekwi pole si yek examine sa pou fe pou fe peye ale se bagay sa ka fet eh, an ou di eh, an, an plas eh, ki pli hopé nou ba eh, sa mwen te kay a vou dwe sa mwen kay eh, parle ba monsieur um, des quatre Quand il est pour faire plus économie, nous t'en a pris pour 1300 monde pour travailler. Nous t'en Covid, nous en dans situation côté nous ca combattre Covid. Nous t'en gouvernement à présent fermer place là. Nous t'en monde pour travailler et bon, nous t'en budget présenté et nous t'en parmi bagaille pays a été supposé 3.5% augmenté été supposé hausser et mi à présent nous t'en parler dit nous t'en contraction, nous t'en liquidité Titi, et, et go parole tout bonnement. Bon, <laughs> ça m'a demandé pour un monde qui a coûté qui a dit qui ça a coûté puis avec Jessica dit là. Moi, quand j'ai dit que j'étais um, dans yon de mon sous parole, côté nous, premier pas, bonne explanation, um, côté nous, premier pas, qui ça qui fait? Um, moun pet travail au Covid, um, et que nous avons contraction, qui vle dit, qui ça? En tout, pour pour bagay Covid là, il nous parler des affaires économiques. Dis-nous situation. Ok, Cox, on va essayer de faire Oui, 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 c'est Cox, on va essayer de Mais c'est même quand on a un de la carton, nous, nous brisons mon copain. Qui situation gouvernement dans les connuies? Les les nous qui parlent des économiques, les connuies. Qui ça qui fait? Connuies. Donc, à chaque monde savent que la pays qui dépend de ce tourisme. Et le tourisme secteur qui employé à chaque monde. Oui, oui. Et quand le Covid l'a fait, nous ne pouvons pas venir à la vacation, nous ne pouvons pas voyager pour faire des vacances ici. Nous ne pouvons pas faire des vacances. Donc, ces hôtels sont là pour faire du money business, nous ne pouvons pas continuer à payer. Donc, nous ne pouvons pas tout. La vie moun, la vie moun ka yo. Et as a result, ou ha ou nyan yishwa, ma mwenni bills pou peye, mwenni man bouche, mwenni pou manye, mwenni yishman pou pwenke, ki manye, adep to dat, gouvernement te ni pou feme, feme peye ya. So, that means, ou pasa, baz, 
kaba we ko trai bwati won mo um so to call it um a, a, a restaurant mm -hmm. tout ces bay ça so you yo fermé c'est si moun la ki te ka travail la yo pa ka so mm -hmm. ou, ou hen a situation wè moun pa ka travail mm -hmm. moun moun brisin um l'argent mm -hmm. et business et, ou brisin et biz, ou brisin business tout so on est pour gouvernement na ni a situation il ni pour aider c'est aider ces monde là so gouvernement venir dit il ka bay support bay moun pour en haïti bay yo bay yo support gouvernement ka ka chile ki mané ça aider ces ces petits business là aussi mais bagay là c'est ça avant covid pays nous était à en route pour 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 grow mm -hmm. uh, pour pour grow et augmenter faire plus mais mm -hmm. um, approcher toi toi pour ça 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 would have mean that a lot of activity mm -hmm. mon mm -hmm. travail construction bagay mm -hmm. um, tourism plus touristique nous nous mm -hmm. expect plus touristique à venir et 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 so on est plus mon travail quand covid la point mm -hmm. tout ça doit bout okay. Pahen, saudah kita expect lah pakar vini, at saudenya itu buat um, so ini situasi yang, that unau ni apa yang kita ada stand still, at 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 government ini buat pun policies to make sure that upate ni a health crisis, because you just imagine kok si uti si si nuti kong the US lah di Italy, kiki kiki, nu pati kai mem kapal ya, kapal ikan nu pati kai isia, nu pati kai isia, you know so so government ini pupun, and actually as a result of that, government realize that ekonomi ferme, munda hatua hai, um so now ni pulu kat policies ki 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 kai ide government at at ekonomi ya, at si government kat try that economic recovery strategy, bu buy mun sub support in the during periods ah, and hopefully let COVID um, do both. Mm -hmm. Let us have no guys a vie continue um, oh. at development of the area. Okay. Eh okay. ben bon, quoi, moi, moi, qu'on pense à quoi, ça on va dire enfin pour me en court. Ça y a c'est un chaque monde peut travailler. As a result of the COVID, we are dependent on the affairs of tourists, who are coming from the other side of construction and activity that are happening in the country. Covid vini, c'est bas ça du bout. A pas de ça, gouvernement tenait pour mettre pour le si en place qu'on y a fait mes bonnes nous. Mon pâté ça allait en cinéma, mon pâté ça allait en restaurant. Mon quoi en d'un pays a pas de l'argent, pas d'activité. Bah pas à coup avec marché manier ici posé. Et gouvernement tenait bon qu'on a côté département qui a vini à présent. Les nous tenons nous cap aller bas avec raison, nous cap aller bas. Qu'on nous raconte tout ça qu'a fait mon père travailleau là là avec L'autre qui a parlé, vous mentionnez un bagage qui était bien important. Vous dites, l'œil vini à présent, ou ni ou tenez conseil, ou l'œil vini pour um, employment, avec le monde qui a travaillé, avec l'État, mm -hmm. en chaque monde, ça y est, on est, ça y est, ça fait que l'homme est, il n'y a pas aimé faire l'école, et bien, mm -hmm. à présent, nous avons parlé en chaque, l'œil pour faire, puis Haïti, c'est qui c'est computer, mm -hmm. et ça fait computer. Et, à présent, le gouvernement n'est pas mis ses policiers, si le gouvernement n'est pas fini. Et pas dit que nous COVID, et pas dit que nous agi, et que nous avons qui manière nous combattre le COVID. Il n'est pas présent avec qui manière c'est nous qui ne pas travailler. Policy, business, tout le monde est ensemble. C'est le côté département qui a venu à présent pour mettre le bagage en place. Pas dit que nous en COVID pour que les gens aient un soulagement et après la COVID, pour que les gens aient un massé. Oui. Eh bien, bon, je crois que les gens ont compris ça qui allait aller avant. Je crois que c'est là, par exemple, quand ils parlent de Jesse, ils viennent pour plein gouvernement et qui manière ont mis des bagages en place. Quoi que c'est ça, mon sang économiste. Eh bien, on nous dit que nous avons essayé de nous coûter avec Jesse bien. Je crois que c'est ça, nous voulons que les gens comprennent. Côté nous, il y a un coup de nous qui a parlé de Jesse à présent, qui a parlé de l'Evini pour qui ça à présent, le gouvernement qui a mis en place. Pour que les gens comprennent, nous ne sommes pas en train de faire l'acide. Parce que l'autre pays, même, nous avons fait ça. Et puis, nous avons besoin d'activité. Mais en toute activité, nous avons besoin de combattre la COVID. Pour que nous allons aller, Jesse, nous avons besoin de faire bien. Merci pour ça, Economist Cooks. The United Nations has stated that COVID-19, the shocks, will be too big to handle for small island developing states like St. Lucia. Already reeling from climate-related... Uh, uh, challenges, the toll on the tourism sector. Mm -hmm. uh, can you speak to us about what is in the arsenal for St. Lucia 
in terms of giving this COVID-19 a good fight? Sure. So the, the Department of Economic Development, uh, Transport and Civil Aviation has the mandate to develop national development planning for, for St. Lucia. So what is our long-term trajectory in terms of where we want our country to go, the structure of our, our, of our economy? Mm -hmm. It is also responsible for what we call the public sector investment program. Okay. So what you see that is featured in your, in your budgets, uh, in your annual budgets, projects that, that forms part of your PSIP, which would have emanated out of your medium-term development strategy. Um, so, the Department of, of uh, one of the questions that, that is now being posed to us is you have a medium term development strategy, GSC, mm -hmm. like you would have indicated, was launched on the, in, Feb in February 27th. Mm -hmm. uh, and just, it, well, COVID was just becoming uh, a, 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 a new thing to us. In, in know, our neck of the in, woods. You know, so mm -hmm. in our lexicon, nobody, you know, and, and so on. Um, and so now the question is how do we uh, um, continue? And, and how relevant is our MTDS now in this context? Mm -hmm. um, and I want to say that the, the MTDS was built on uh, the, uh, the tagline, uh, economic growth on the arise. Um, and, and the arise here is accelerated, resilient, inclusive, sustainable, and equitably shared growth. So we wanted accelerated growth. Mm -hmm. his, historically, our growth has been very low and volatile, Jesse. So, mm -hmm. you know, 2%, 2, 1.5%. 2 and that is really not the kind of growth that you want if you know to be able to impact the standard of living of your of your people in a very meaningful way so we focus largely on how do we going to accelerate that and push so we're hoping that we could have gotten four five and six percent growth consistently over you know four five ten mm -hmm. years you know Carlton, mm -hmm. and, you know and that will change your 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 your, your, your the, the the situation on the ground significantly then the issue of resilience you mm -hmm. know and what we saw is that climate resilience mm -hmm. was a big thing. And, and one of the things that we, when we were putting this document together, we, we said, well, what are the risks that we'll be facing? And obviously climate was up there. You mm -hmm. know, we know that the impact of Thomas, we had seen what um, the, the impact, um, you know, of Maria and Erica would have had on, on our neighboring islands. And we know definitely climate resilience had to be on. Mm -hmm. But not in our wildest, wildest dreams that we thought that pandemic would have been, uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, but we also ensure that resilience uh, for us is, is also mean, meant that we had to, the document had to be agile. Mm -hmm. It had to be responsive. So yes, you've charted a course, but things are very dynamic. Mm -hmm. Things could change in a split second, and as COVID has, sho has shown, um, the document had to be able to respond quickly. Mm -hmm. and, COVID, and, then we, and COVID now presents us with an opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. And so um, the medium term development strategy has a menu of projects, and I could see that across uh, six key result areas. Okay. Three economic and three social. Um, infrastructure under the economic, uh, tourism, and agriculture. Mm -hmm. And under the social is education, health, healthcare, and citizen security, okay. uh, or citizen safety. Um, a lot of these projects have already, we negotiated these projects with, with multilateral development agencies like the, the, the World Bank, um, the Carbon Development Bank. And so these are project financing. So we've guaranteed the financing for these projects. These projects are, are shovel ready in that a lot of the processes. And, and one of the things that uh, when you um, are developing these sort of projects, there's a gestation period. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have a project, you a concept, project development, project appraisal. The, the banks, the, you know, have to see whether it's a, a, it's a it's economically profitable and also mm -hmm. financially profitable and so on. Mm -hmm. And so we've done a number of the projects in there. We've gone through that process. So that has elapsed. Mm -hmm. And so we've, we've, we have gone through this process and we're about to now start implementation of projects. Okay. Added to that, I mean, the, 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 that portfolio that we have now is concessional in nature in that mm -hmm. it, the, the, the loans are very, the interest rates on these loans are relatively low. Um, we also have grace periods for these. Mm -hmm. So normally you would get a five-year grace period before you start to repay these loans, which is a very good thing. And also, it's good for our, our debt strategy in that um, we're now trying to move away from, from market debt on bonds and so on and to go towards um, more, more loans which are longer term but con uh, with lower interest rates. Um, and so that's critical. So for us, what we see in terms of the MTDS, Jesse, is that um, while 
we had a, a lot of our projects, we, the, the, the commencement date of these mm -hmm. was, was a bit you know, later down the, down the road. We see an opportunity for us to fast track. Uh, and so pre pretty much using the timing of our of implementation and commencement of projects as a sort of a stimulus to the economy now. Yeah. So let's assume that you, you have maybe four or five big construction activities happening now. Mm -hmm. That's going to significant amount of construction. Persons are going to get employed. You see all the trucks carrying um, um, co uh, uh, concrete and, and, mm -hmm. and so on and, and yeah. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You see your backhoes at work and, you know, and the, the multiplier effect that, you know, these persons now have income. Mm -hmm. They are now going to go and spend. Mm -hmm. Now the, the owners of the shops and retailers are now mm -hmm. going to start re-employing people. Mm -hmm. So that initial, and we see the MTDS having an ab uh, ability to do that, you know, um, and you have to think, well, if, if I did not have a very ambitious capital project, mm -hmm. you know, how do I now, you know, so I think it's, uh, it has presented the government with a sort of a lifeline and a win-win in a sense, you know, um, that you are helping us now smooth that, put some more in jail. And this is not revenue that the government had to get from tax revenues. Yeah. These are loans and so on. And that can now help jumpstart the economy um, in, in the short term, but also the, 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 the help with the, the long-term um, recovery of the country. Mm -hmm. So Jesse, we see the MTDS as being strategically placed now, if, if ever, mm -hmm. to do that sort of um, um, that support, you know, and providing that sort of stimulus. Because um, we do know that the government is now facing serious fiscal constraints, Jesse, mm -hmm. um, in loss of taxes and, and so on as a result of the closure of the tourism sector. And so we believe that the, the, this provides a sort of support um, to, to, the, to, to the government and to the country at this current moment. Okay. Uh, I, I, I take, haven't taken a look at uh, the document. I saw that there, there's a phase, yeah. uh, plan for phased approach yes. towards the, the implementation. Yeah. Can you tell us uh, about that? Well, certainly, I think um, in, in, in planning, you, you have to uh, prioritize. You know, you have to sequence. So you have a host of projects, but you certainly can't implement all these projects in one year. Yeah. And so that's why the MTDS is over a, a, a four-year period. And so there's a phased approach where we prioritize the, the, the projects that we think that are, are of, and, and there are a number of criteria for determining that this mm -hmm. in terms of the shovel readiness, mm -hmm. the strategic importance of that particular project and how it complements um, other projects that you have in your pipeline. Okay. So there's been a very strategic um, approach to that. Um, and so it's critical that we, 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 we phase it out. And again, you have the, cons you have the capacity. You certainly can't, uh, um, maybe if you build in a hospital, you know, th there's, a, there's a, a, a significant amount of, of, of time to, to do that. So you need to phase it out in a, in a very real way. I also want to, 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 to point out, Jesse, one of the, quite apart from stimulating the economy, mm -hmm. um, we use some projects that are in our capital um, to to redirect towards the COVID response. Okay. So for instance, um, o on a number of our World Bank projects have what is called a contingency emergency response component. So it's a, a sort of a wow. clause that says, in the eventuality of a, of a, of a, of a, a, a natural disaster, disaster or an emergency, you can, you have access to a, a, sum, a sum of monies under that project. And some resources under that project can be re reprioritized towards. Mm -hmm. So for instance, under, a project that is under directly under the Department of Economic Development, the Disaster um, Vulnerability Reduction Project (DVRP), mm -hmm. um, we were able to reprioritize resources under that project of to the tune of 5.5 million US, which now goes towards um, the establishment of the the respiratory um, uh, hospital in, at, mm -hmm. at, 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 at VH, mm -hmm. and also the isolation units in the north and the south of the island. So that has helped us to some extent. Uh, we've also had some discussions with um, some other projects in terms of reprioritizing some other projects. So um, we, we now have, in, there's one project in particular, it's the, the OECS um, Regional Tourism Competitiveness Project, which has, which has re initially geared towards the William, which, uh, William Peter Boulevard redevelopment and so on. Mm -hmm. And so there's discussions around maybe we, this can go to another project that can that could stimulate activity a, a, a lot faster Wonderful. and so on. So there's a, there's a thinking that you want to uh, fast track mm -hmm. but repurpose some of your, your projects in a sense mm -hmm. to the extent that you can. I, I think our initial discussions with the, the banks and, and, and World Bank and CDB said, well, there's some sort of a latitude, but mm -hmm. the, the development focus of the, of the project financing still 
uh, has to remain. And so we don't have that latitude to so much um, as, as redirect as, as we want. Okay. But there's a sort of um, discussion around that. Okay. Yeah. And the, the maneuvering to yeah. reappropriate yes. funds in yes. this way, I, I, was, I, I don't want to digress from the MTDS um, yeah. subject, but the, the, um, the rationale, there's some persons who are talking about, if I could go back to the salaries and, and the, the cash bonds mm -hmm. pro proposal, mm -hmm. um, can you speak on the rationale behind uh, the continuing to, to service and honor our debts? Because there's some person saying, well, you know, there definitely is on the table the yeah. option to, mm -hmm. you know, suspend, yeah. you know, servicing our debts to ensure that our people here are taken care of. Yeah, yeah. And I, I know government has to, you know, move as yeah, very carefully yeah, as possible. Yeah. Can you speak to the rationale behind that? So, um, so Jesse, obviously the issue around servicing your debt um, is an ongoing discussion now. Okay. The IMF and the, the World Bank are saying perhaps the best policy now is for um, for debt holders and, and, and so on to give a sort of debt relief to, to, to small island developing states. Give them that sort of breathing space to, to respond to um, to respond to, 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 to the COVID issue. Um, so while while um, well persons are saying well perhaps we should look at you know taking not, not paying our debts, but mm -hmm. that has to be done in a very coordinated way. Um, and so uh, if you if you just decide you're not paying your debts, then in, it becomes a default uh, in a sense, and and a default has serious repercussions for your country in a sense, and so that's something that um, it, it's not a very straightforward thing, and I think the government is um, is you know is 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 has known that is 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 honoring its commitment to its to its debt holders in lieu of a formal arrangement. Um, okay. and, and obviously, just this thing happened in so so quickly, mm -hmm. you know. So you know um, how you know. So there's a sort of um, challenge now to, to to bring everybody to the table and have the discussions. But um, certainly, um, uh, I think you know someone will think, well, maybe don't just don't pay your debt and and, <laughs> and, and so the salaries, you know. Um, but I think the government, you know, in, in public financial management, um, knows that. You know, you need to service your debt. Because you know, I, I wanted know, to establish you know, that there is deliberate, yes, yeah. you know, thought behind, yeah. you know, the decisions that yeah, are taken yeah, in respect yeah, to that. Yeah. Well, we're going you back know. to MTDS. Yes, yes. <laughs> the yes. seven uh, national development pillars. Yes, yes. Um, at, at the top of it is building productive capacity, yeah. expanding growth opportunities. We see building strong institutions that are a platform for growth and development. Uh, t tell us um, some of the targets uh, in, in, in the national development pillars uh, at the moment. Yeah, so yeah, uh, they, they, we have seven national development pillars, and mm -hmm. Jesse, you, I don't have them before me now, but mm -hmm. you know, generally the, the focus is on, on, on your health care, uh, yes. productivity, uh, uh, infrastructure, resilience, climate. Uh, and so these pillars, again, while St. Lucia uh, does not have a, a long term national development plan, and, and a, a very few countries in the region actually have one. So mm -hmm. uh, you look at Jamaica, probably Trinidad, I think, who has are very long term talking about 20 or 30 years, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but in, in repeated processes where we start to do national planning, we see that there's a recurring theme around the seven areas, Jesse. Mm -hmm. And so that has somewhat been the benchmark, the base of what we want. You know, uh, productivity is critical, diversifying your economy, um, your human capital, education is critical, your skill sets and ICT and so So these are the, fun the fundamentals upon which this MTDS that we've, we launched in, 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 in February 27th um, is built on. Um, and so perhaps I could, the, and, and I guess th what the government did in the MTDS process was we sort of selected a narrow list of six key result areas. Okay. Um, and on, on, the, on the, the call la last night, well, um, uh, the, the moderator was saying, well, energy is not really placed there and so mm -hmm. on. And so there are some areas that you realize that there's not dedicated um, uh, commitment from the MTDS. Sure. Mm -hmm. Again, historically, our development um, approaches in terms of our national development plans, what we've seen is a sort of, the government has taken uh, prepared documents that have a, a, a whole host of interventions across a wide spectrum of sectors. What that creates is a sort of a, a, a prioritization failure. Mm -hmm. I give you all these, and I've said over three years, you need to sort of remedy these. Mm -hmm. What actually happens is that you, you somewhat don't give dedicated attention to any one of these in a sense and to get that kind of 
uh, transformational change that you want in the, in the particular sector. So I think the wisdom behind the six key results is that you have resource constraints, both financial and, 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 and human resource constraints. And let's zoom in on some of these key sectors and get uh, dedicated transformation or real genuine lasting transformation in that sector. Um, in a sense, um, and, and, and also the focus was the structural issues. These are issues that are critical. For instance, you look at, I go, I go back to the case of education. We've, heard, we've been hearing the case that persons are unemployable, Jesse. That's mm -hmm. been ongoing. On for, so the government says, we've heard this thing for a long time. This is an ongoing issue for quite some time. Let's deal with this now. Let's give it dedicated attention. The issue of health care. Um, mm -hmm. You know, now we see that a lot of issues, uh, even COVID has shown that persons with pre-existing conditions and so on. So a strong focus on, on primary health care mm -hmm. uh, and preventative care is, is featured in the MTDS. Um, and, and, and so the focus is both on economic access and physical access. So I may build wonderful hospitals mm -hmm. with all the, all the, the services, but then if, I, if the, uh, the, the, the regular uh, cell motion cannot afford and access these services, then, then so, so the system is not built. So the real intention of, 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 of hospital is to give healthcare to individuals mm -hmm. and if persons can. So, so the strategy looks at both the physical, improving the quality of healthcare that is mm -hmm. provided, but also the ability of the average cell motion. And that's why access. there's a national health insurance um, framework as part of this. On the constructions, on the, the, the infrastructure side, uh, focus on a lot of our infra road infrastructure. Uh, rehabilitating a sizable amount of our road infrastructure um, and with the with the, the lens from a climate resilience lens yes you would have mm -hmm. seen in, in, in the aftermath of hurricane Thomas a significant amount of our of our road infrastructure was was devastated now yes um, you know every time you go back and then and one of the areas that we, we the, the government is, is, is grappling with there's there's the debt that you, you accumulate to rebuild that infrastructure rehab you know, and, and so, and that's not new capital, that's not new initiative, just replacing your existence. So a strong focus on climate resilience, resilient infra infrastructure uh, is, is at the forefront. Uh, a focus around expanding your, your airports and the capacity of your airports um, to, 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 to carry a lot more tourist, tourist um, uh, your ports. Uh, these are critical infrastructure that would, would help mm. change the trajectory of your, of your economy. The issue around social, um, um, citizen security, Jesse. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's that that perception, and and I was just you know um, uh, last night we were talking about that. It is not just citizen security, but also business security. Mm -hmm. If you look at almost every business, have two or three guards posted mm -hmm. securing mm -hmm. you know their business and so on. So that's a lot of resources that perhaps um, our businesses could have taken to go into going digital, uh, scaling up their their digital and going mm -hmm. into. But now they have to secure that from potential persons who would come in. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, that's a tremendous cost. Even in the case of agriculture, one of the issues for an, an inhibitors for persons going into agriculture is that um, if I plant my food, before I can harvest it, somebody comes and, and harvests it. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, in, in, my, in my particular case, I have access to some land in a particular community and I wouldn't see cooks, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But I wouldn't dare yes. go and plant anything on yeah. there because I know there's a huge risk that somebody's going to come. Mm -hmm. um, and just harvest them, themselves. you know. So, so the government has put this whole prejudice last in the, uh, uh, front and center in that, you know, trying to get persons, hey, uh, we want you to go into agriculture, but we're also going to be very, very um, deliberate and try to stem the prejudice last in the issue that we are seeing in St. Lucia. And I would have spoken to the education. Mm -hmm. uh, on yes, the tourism yeah. side, uh, the, the whole village tourism is a big thing in a sense that mm -hmm. we, we now want to move um, away from just having these this hotel plants, you know, that are somewhat uh, uh, insulated from the, the, the economy itself, and now go to rural, you know, um, so in your communities, you now try to um, improve the, the quality of the tourism product as, that is offered there. Mm -hmm. And that village is tourism. village tourism, mm -hmm. which then links to your, your local rural community, so your fisheries. So, for instance, in the case of agriculture, um, ancillary, sorry, there is a fishing community. How do you tie? If you have a very good product here, you can now tie that to your fisher folk and, mm -hmm. and your agriculture folk and the general culture mm -hmm. or, 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 um, in that community. So, so that's the first um, beyond, and there are also a number of private sector um, related initiatives there also.
Okay, yeah. wonderful. Uh, we are speaking to Mr. Tommy Descartes, the chief economist, uh, and he was instrumental in the formulation of the medium term uh, development strategy uh, that was just launched in St. Lucia, February, of course, coinciding with the onset of COVID-19 here on island uh, and overall globally. Uh, when we come back, we want to talk about uh, how these efforts of the government of St. Lucia tie into our meeting our sustainable development goals mm -hmm. uh, as well as other uh, topics within that document. We're also going to talk about how we're going to fund um, much of the, the, the plans uh, in this document. Do stay tuned. These are my new superheroes. That's why they're all wearing masks. Doing everything they can to keep everyone in St. Lucia safe. You don't think we know who you are, but we see you every single day. You are my friend's dad, my uncle, my father, my best friend's mom, my aunt, and the guy next door. You are the best of all of us, working together to save the world. Not all superheroes get to wear capes. But you might have noticed, they're all wearing masks. So, be a hero and wear one too. Stay safe, your Digicel family. The approach, yeah. mention of the village reserves yeah. as we had it in the budget as yeah. an approach. And yeah. we take it from there. Thank you so very much for staying tuned. We are live on NTN from the Information Command Center at uh, GIS. Uh, we continue with this morning's discussion, engagement with uh, the Chief Economist, Mr. Tommy Descartes, on the state of the economy uh, during this COVID-19 uh, situation that we're going through and efforts uh, to recover uh, from COVID-19. Uh, we've been talking about uh, the MTDS, the Medium Term Development Strategy of the Government of St. Lucia, introduced uh, in February and coinciding with the onset of COVID-19. And we're talking about how it can really help us, help uh, um, Boy St. Lucia as we try to come out of COVID-19. Uh, I want to hand over to Carlton to just uh, help in the summarize or go over in Creole uh, the discussion so far. Uh, merci tellement, Jesse. Uh, encore, M. Um, Descat, uh, toujours un privilège pour nous, um, nous ici. Encore pour vous qui a écouté uh, nous, et qui a catché qui a fait ici à Headquarters COVID-19. Vers maintenant, nous avons combattu. Et comment nous voulons nous commencer, nous avons une formation de développement. Tout ça, vous avez ça, vous pour faire vers maintenant. Encore, moi, toujours, je dis, en chaque secteur, tout ce qui est affecté. Le gouvernement, il faut venir avec un plan, le gouvernement, il faut trouver une manière pour agir. Tout ça qui est allé à unemployment, um, um, uh, um, COVID, la, santé, agriculture, nous avons l'école, parler de lui, tout le monde, moi, ou tout le monde doit être affecté. Quoi, bon matin, eh, nous avons mené tout le monde l'école. Tout le monde est eh, supposé si comprendre qui ça qui a fait là. Bon, si vous avez compris, écoutez, euh, plus bon, eh, moi, je de suis dit, c'est eh, lui qui est chef économiste, c'est un économiste eh, qui travaille en département économique, développement, um, um, gouvernement. Eh, Raison pour ça, c'est le gouvernement qui a un plan. Et le plan, c'est qui ça? Et nous avons un côté nous. Nous avons un l'argent, nous avons une contraction qui veut dire que nous pas dépenser, nous ne pouvons pas le business pas faire l'argent, le business fermé, nous avons une contraction qui veut dire que nous n'avons pas activité économique en pays. Nous avons un affaire de liquidité, nous avons un affaire de liquidité, nous avons un même quand nous fermons le business, nous n'avons pas l'argent. La pan bagay, c'est l'argent qui a fait et bruit la couille qu'on nous a dit. La panne, ça. En l'air, tout ça, nous a combattu le Covid. Quand là, on a changé pour vous encore qui a payé en tension, là, il vient pour euh, janvier, février. Le gouvernement a présenté un plan. Le plan, ça, c'est pas pour euh, tout le temps, il y a un pouvoir, mais euh, 10 000 temps, il y a un plan pour dire quoi y a aller, qui mange y a aller, qui ça y a. Et le plan ça te supposé adresser, euh, yo point approche, un, 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 yo dit, yo kai fei, yo point considération, six stages. Et en bas, section 3 économique, 3 social. En bas, en um, économique, là, ou kai wele, vini pour infrastructure, nous ka parler chimé, nous ka parler eh, développement, euh, 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 bay, nous parler agriculture, avec l'autre la tourisme. Encore, ou kai sav, tout se bay sa touve koi affecté, mais plan te hala. En mm. eh, l'autre side là, le vini pour social, nous ka parler éducation, santé, et puis sécurité, eh, pep, en pays. Bon, encore. Le gouvernement présente ça, la pâte ni COVID. Pièce COVID. Bam, COVID vini. 
qu'on a présent, il y a un autre qui est bien intéressé à la date de M. Descadino, qui a parlé de nous à présent. Le gouvernement vient de plan, qui m'a dit qu'il y a un fait, qui ça y a un fait, il vient de l'approche là, il y a un système là, trois économiques, trois sociales. Bon, ça qui est bien important, il dit, priorité, il y a un fait, 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 il y en chaîne, nous avons changé, nous espérons ces mauvais temps, hurricane, nous avons manier chimène, nous avons nous avons manier port, bateau pas te santoué, nous avons manier avion pas te s'apposé. Quand il y a ces priorités à y balancer, les vini pour temps qui manier qui affecte nous. Manier, nous aussi, ouais, manier était qu'à chaud. Mon cas dit, mais c'est dans ton chaud qu'on a, mon pas ça même planté. Quand point tout ça en considération, gouvernement vient avec un plan. Et c'est pour ça qu'on attend de parler de MTDS qui voulait dire un plan de développement, pas pour tout le temps le gouvernement là, mais pour un nouveau dimi. Il y a dit, mais c'est là nous allons aller, manière nous allons aller. Quoi, moi, quoi, moi, j'ai une explanation ça. On fait un bon travail. Moi, je fais un bon travail. Quoi, ça nous dit, vous devez dire, juste là, il vient pour le budget. Nous, tant que gouvernement parle, il dit, manière, il fait ses bails, il fait ses plans ça. Je vais vous dire, dit nous, qui ça s'est planté vite, man. quoi, moi, quoi, moi, j'ai parlé dans les trois stages là, avec manière, il a approché. Est-ce que ça dit, on dit, parle à sous. Où est zone catchy la day? Levin expressement a nous dit Levin pour agriculture et puis en bas un secteur économique là tourisme avec nous tant en bas jet là il a parlé de village tourism qui c'est mener touristes à ces villages là qui ça qui catchy la day? Avec l'autre bas il a manqué il faut parler dans le gouvernement de se faire priorité ça il dit Levin pour affecter en manière tant qu'à affecter nous en Kawai blanc parler de ça avec moi avec Troisième, dans trois bails, je vais vous adresser parce que vous avez voulu vous venir à l'aide, Jesse. Là, il vient pour vous parler de Chosa, dans tout un fonds, nous avons une assistance, nous avons une banque latérale, AMF, là, nous avons une agence, là, nous avons un petit mot de parole dans tout le contrat, nous avons un agrément, qui a dit, si nous avons un temps sous coup, eh bien, disas, nous ça servi en cela, en ça, pour la COVID, tout le monde nous la présent, pour nous bénéficier, là, il vient pour la situation. Le premier point, moi, je suis en train de faire ça, je suis en train de faire ça, je suis en train de faire ça, ça nous a dit, et sans ça nous a dit, c'est que le gouvernement n'est pas en plan. Il n'est en plan, pour raison, nous tout fait dans la situation, mais ça nous a dit, c'est qui s'est planté. Oui, oui. Donc, oui, le gouvernement n'est en plan. Et le plan, ça nous nous implémenter nous 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 dit pep pays à en février qui passer là mi plan nous ni pour pays et plan ça a commencé l'année ça et qui 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 du bout 2023 OK so en plan 4 l'année 4 l'année et plan qu'on dit plan c'est 6 stage de 6 um c'est oui 6 stage oui et um économique Trois économiques et trois sociales. C'est économique là, c'est infrastructure qui est premier. Le gouvernement a prioritisé pour faire chimer. Et tout ça, chimer vers tout important pour une pièce économique. Puis c'est là où ça move, où on peut aller. En chaque fois, il y a travaillé en hôtel, il y a un peu de travail pour l'hôtel là. Ou il y a un chimer pour amener ces gens à ces hôtels là ou qui sont en pharma, mm -hmm. ou, 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 ou planter ma, ma heu, en, en lycée Babono, mm -hmm. mais c'est en ville qui, où, qui market là, on est pour mener là, c'est au brise chimé, chimé pour faire ça. Mais nous, ça, en, en temps, nous avons vivre là, un hurricane, mm -hmm. c'est un gros problème pour nous. Mm -hmm. Et nous, et, 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 Thomas, mm -hmm. un chai chimé nous te croisé, as, as, as nous, et, le, la tenir temps, um, mon qui en soude là par exemple par la ville en off là, so ça n'est pas problème, ça va faire un problème par par gouvernement et par par peuple là, so gouvernement capitalise sa resilient infrastructure, so chimé qui ça qui ça qui là sous les hurricanes c'est chimé à ça ou ou ça aussi mon barrage quasi, vous comprenez? ou ça continue, mais en chaque temps un hurricane qui peut être eight eight hours, huit neuf heures, huit neuf heures mais si vous parlez de ces bails en place, il ne peut pas laisser trois, quatre jours. Le gouvernement est pour venir nettoyer le chemin, faire des bridges, et ces bails. Donc le gouvernement a gardé ça expressement. Et nous avons aussi gardé l'airport. Nous 
Et pour briser un upgrade. Vous comprenez, runway, soit aller là, ou nous, so le gouvernement veut expandre un pour un pour pour un plus de monde, ça vient un pour un plus gros jet, ça en volé, en tout en train de poser ici. Vous comprenez? Et nous avons gardé aussi les issues de l'eau. Résilient, nous avons gardé, 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 bon, nous avons gardé, nous avons gardé, nous avons moi, je suis en train de me dire que les social media ont dit que COVID est un COVID. Mais je suis pour applaudir Wasco parce que, même en tant que ça, nous ne pouvons pas faire de pièces. Mais ici, je suis en train de me dire que le gouvernement n'est pas propriétaire de l'eau. Donc, en chaque projet, nous avons vu fort de l'eau. Nous sommes dans le dernier projet qui a fini là. Donc, on a un projet en rond de l'eau. Vous comprenez Et ça a aussi aidé à l'agriculture. Vous comprenez En tourisme, le gouvernement a regardé le village tourisme. Donc, le tourisme, nous sommes dans le village tourisme. 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 Le plan du gouvernement, c'est en tout cas, c'est comme ça. Développer le tourisme dans le secteur. Si so, mm -hmm. on a un monde qui a un petit guest house, le ah. ouais. plan c'est ça, aider les gens pour upgrade le guest oui. house. Le mm -hmm. oui. gouvernement a un petit peu de temps pour sort of a grant pour mm -hmm. uh, 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 assistance. Mais pas juste ça, les gens qui ont un monde pour market. Um, mm -hmm. So, actuellement, c'est tout le monde computer. Oui. Les gens qui ont un pays, ils ont un book, ils ont regardé comment ils veulent. Il n'y a pas de business. 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 Il n'y a Là où on pour pour l'agriculture, le gouvernement a décidé de nous sept crops. Oui, nous avons parlé de ça. Nous avons parlé de ça. Oui. Nous gardons ces crops là, nous avons importé là. Et nous gardons si nous avons provide ces crops là. Nous avons ici. Ici. Et donc, nous avons besoin de ça ici pour l'arrondi. Qui m'a dit que nous avons produit et devenu self-sufficient. Donc, nous n'avons pas besoin pour livestock. Donc, nous avons besoin de quantité de mahi nous avons importé. En chai en protéine, en chai chicken, chicken box, wings, nous avons importé. Mais nous avons une ligne, nous avons une ligne. Nous avons une ligne, nous avons une ligne, c'est pour aider le pays à produire plus local. Nous avons une ligne bon plan. Nous avons une ligne en campagne qui a eu Tale launch Car mm. Caribbean quality meats mm -hmm. et ça c'est which will help qui mm. aider pour c'est um, um, pour nous ça c'est 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 mon là qui a produit chicken là qui a aidé yo et nous avons plus viande production ici à production ici à so vous comprenez oui so et then um, nous allons regarder ces social secteur sur so, mm -hmm. um, vêtements de um, éducation, éducation. Ou en chai, nous avons en chai, jeune monde qui n'a pas ni ses skills là, pour qu'ils soient en travail. Donc, si moi je suis en travail contre le Digicel, je veux un monde qui n'a pas certaines skills, c'est un monde qui s'est servi comme tout. Si vous n'avez pas ça, je vais vous employer. Oui, parce que vous brisez ça. Vous brisez ça. Donc, un plan c'est pour bâiller le monde de skills. L'État pour qu'ils soient en travail. Also, if you are at the university college, like Arthur Lewis, all of these plans are there. You understand? But we are focused on the skills. Yes, the state. The state. The state. The state. The state. The government plan is to make sure that the state is in the north. Yes. So, the government plan is to make sure that the state is in the north. Yes. So, the OKEU, St. Jude's, et à chaque 
um, Lotti Community Center, Lotti Community Lotti Polyclinic, Lotti Polyclinic. Pour pour Et plan c'est pour 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 pas espérer les gens ni maladie qui qui grave. So mm -hmm. buy mon uh, support pour les yo ça ça va preventative healthcare. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. mon yo ka manger, exercise et si quand là même on va ça contrôler quand on va pas trouver en situation oui, côté oui. union l'hôpital avec tout le monde qui a oui, couru aller oui, là. Oui. Quand sous contrôler oui. commencer en commune là et qu'on est ce type là clinique là que c'est type ça. Quand ça en bas santé. On parler vite mais avant aller parler by um, Jesse là eh, parler dit eh, c'est l'agent qui a venu là il venir pour ça parce que eh, c'est ça nous voulons mon copain eh, dat qui là nous trouvé qu'on a ça la terre en plan mm -hmm. et nous met ce bail ça en place et au quand tout le monde qui a dit l'agent qui a sorti et puis qui a servi l'agent quand il parle dans les segments, il y a un vieux et puis un Jesse. Ce qu'on dit, bon, ben là, nous nou, nou tenons en plan. Mm -hmm. Il y a plus mauvais, si on est en situation, on n'a pas de plan. 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 Et le plan, ça nous te fait différent avant un prévient plan. Il y a nous te fait décider qui manière nous faire. Um, et plan mette ça. Si, sur la hand, nous te fait acheter la hand, sur le World Bank. So, nous sommes là, ça là, mm -hmm. ready pour pour ça commencer mm -hmm. à implémenter ces ces ce projets là. So, en contexte Covid là, là qui manière est-ce qu'on peut continuer puis c'est plan Covid mm -hmm. porté là. Mm -hmm. So, ça nous qu'il fait différent. Et ça nous qu'a try faire là, c'est ce type projet. Mm -hmm. Nous t'ai dit possible ces projets ça qu'a commencé en dit octobre. Mm -hmm. Gouvernement a dit si nous ça a commencé ces projets ça plus plus vite. Mm -hmm. Maybe moi ça not moi. Mm -hmm ou commencer so, ou, ou ka commencer ta en lèchement ou ka commencer ta en différents di di projets mm -hmm. moun ki en en employé ka hen ta hay moun sa ka ni la han poche yo ka commencer so nou ka wè MTDS la mm -hmm. ka si i i, 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 i ou sa servi pour ça pour aider en situation covid la Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, we're running out of time, but I just want to talk about the funding of the MTDS. Uh, can you just speak on how, how are we going to finance? I know you, you touched on it a bit, but zoom out on how yes. we're going to finance yes. the MTDS. So again, the, the MTDS, um, when we developed the MTDS, uh, deliberate effort was placed on the resources to implement your MTDS. Because you, you can always come up with an elaborate uh, plan, mm -hmm. but how feasible is that plan if you don't have the financial resources to do so 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 we we worked very closely with the the caribbean development bank okay and as a matter of fact the the caribbean development bank has a what they call a country engagement strategy and that is a, a sort of over a, a window how they will engage with Selmosha in terms of what resources they make available to Selmosha. and so um the mtds coincide with that that uh, that that's that that that, that country engagement strategy from the Caribbean Development Bank and a lot of the pillars we have already, we've already gotten resources dedicated to that in a sense okay. for, you know so um, obviously we have a World Bank similarly we have World Bank funding available but one of the critical things that we did differently in, in, in this time we got support from the World Economic Forum through the whole UN system to develop what is called a country financing roadmap for St. Lucia um, and the thinking was that um, tied to the SDG implementation Mm -hmm. So Saint Lucia is signatory to USDG, mm -hmm. SDGs, and so on. Um, and there's this sort of that. There's uh, globally there's a thinking that we are falling behind on our SDGs. Mm -hmm. 2030 is the target. We are already 2020, and uh, a lot of the a lot of the the, the 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 ambitious targets seem to be that we we losing momentum and uh, mm -hmm. on on that. So, um, so that that world economic forum is coming in, and the thinking is that to develop a financing ro roadmap where we, we engage a host of multilateral agencies and, and also on the private sector side mm -hmm. um, to now um, look at some of the projects that we have in St. Lucia and then develop these projects so that they can become uh, uh, what you call uh, bankable projects and tie these projects to the most appropriate funding agency or the donor or the private sector entity. So, mm -hmm. so the government is working a lot with uh, this World Bank and CDB and so on. The World Economic Forum now is just a big organization, a global organization that has, you know, G20 and all these, you know, mm -hmm. they are now saying we have this network of individuals across the largest firms in the world. We can now connect, connect you to, to some of these, these persons, these companies, and start that dialogue as to how you can fund some. So that's, uh, that's, that's ongoing. Mm -hmm. And we anticipate that there's going to be a, 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 a significant um, 
returns from that from from that from these efforts. And Saint Lucia is actually the first country, uh, globally, uh, um, along with with Ghana, to mm -hmm. to sort of start that. Because the thing is, there, there, Jesse, there's a lot of funding in the global community available. So, for instance, there's a Green Climate Fund, which is a huge fund that came out of the Paris Agreement and so on. Um, resources to help climate resilience and so on. Mm -hmm. um, but it's one thing to have the funds there and um, globally tapping in and getting yeah. them to be. So the World Economic Forum is now coming in and see, okay, how we can unlock funding that's available to achieve first climate resilience, but also SDG implementation. Okay. And so that's the role we see here. Um, we hope that it can really bear fruit, you know, um, and, and, and we anticipate that, and, and not just that St. Lucia is now emerging as a leader in, that, in, in, in development financing, because you're now seeing, um, mm. we now, smaller and other small developing countries can, can learn from our experience in terms of our country financing uh, roadmap and so on. But particularly, we see the country financing roadmap assisting in key areas that perhaps the public sector can't can necessarily venture into, and, and more on the private sector side. So for instance, energy. You, mm -hmm. The energy is one of the big areas for us in terms of renewable energy, geothermal energy, and so on. Um, and that's, these are very, um, the capital outlay initially can be very significant. Um, and you need firms with the expertise that can really, you know, and so we see that the World Economic Forum can help to, to, to get into the private sector areas um, to, to some extent and help us uh, tap into and get resources um, 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 it, um, to, to help us achieve our medium-term development strategy. Okay, we're running out of time. Any okay, final Jesse. words? Well, uh, I think, Jesse, um, this is an un unprecedented, I mean, uh, time in that the entire world, you know, even mm -hmm. in the case of a hurricane, you know, um, and, and I also like to say, I mean, we have a hurricane looming, you know, mm -hmm. you know and, and mm -hmm. a hurricane season looming, and it's actually projected to be very a very active season. You know, and, and you don't want, just imagine dealing with COVID and having to deal with a hurricane simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So that's a, so it's unprecedented. It's a global, global is, is issue. Uh, it is both a public health and an economic issue. Um, the, 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 the sort of response, it will re require collective response of all, all agents, governments, the business, households, everybody, public, private sector have to put their shoulders to the wheel mm. in order for us to combat it. So this, it's my view is that it's not a, it's not a time to, to, to be divisive and, 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 and let's work towards a common goal of weathering the storm and coming out, emerging stronger out of COVID. Um, I also want to make the point that there's a lot of opportunities that has been, you know, that have been um, emerging now. Mm -hmm. uh, opportunities in the digital economy, opportunities mm -hmm. in, um, in a number of other areas and so I think COVID provides us as a government an opportunity to start moving quicker to, to bring out the transformation and the changes that we want to see in our country. And um, so I would like to just say that, you know, the Department of Economic Development uh, uh, team and the Permanent Secretary, we, we see the, our MTDS as being a critical uh, policy response tool now in, in the context of COVID, which will help in the short term in terms of stimulating that economic activity that we want and creating demand but also continuing to help us uh, give us a good platform for recovery uh, and also our long-term development strategy. So, mm -hmm. so these are my final words, Jesse. Yeah, and I, lastly, I would also want to say communication. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's a, because of that uncertainty, uh, we don't know how long COVID is going to last. Mm -hmm. We don't know the, the extent of the impact on our economy. But you don't want to create an additional layer of uncertainty in terms of what is the government doing? You understand? Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think the, the command center and so on mm -hmm. is, 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 is helping in that case by, by providing information mm -hmm. to the public as to what the government is doing. And I think that's a very commendable initiative because otherwise you don't want people to be in the dark. Um, mm -hmm. and, 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 and so, so I'd like to commend the GIS team for, for this very, and, and I, I was telling Davina, it's every single day there's a program and I can imagine the amount of, 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 of work Cooks his hair every every day, you know. Yeah, so right. you know. So <laughs> certainly, I want to commend you guys um, you. for this and and um, and thank you very much.
Yeah, thank you very much. Yes. And, and thanks to the MTDS, you know, in our holster that we're able to now, yeah. you know, move forward into recovering from COVID-19. Uh, thank you so much for uh, watching this morning. This has been the St. Lucia COVID-19 response report uh, this morning featuring the chief economist, uh, Mr. Tommy Descartes. Uh, on behalf of the entire production team, uh, Carlton and myself, we do hope that you have continued to have a good morning and a good week. Uh, do stay tuned for more programming here on NTN. Goodbye. In a world where June is our